Okay. There we and, go. And we're back. With a giant history lesson today. <laughs> <laughs> I am very excited to do my best to remember this. I, I am fully <laughs> expecting Eric is fucking with us and like trying to build it up. It's like, yeah, nothing will happen today, guys, but there's secretly like five different encounters we could run into over the course of this like political meeting. Yeah, it just turned surprise me. <laughs> Which it wouldn't it surprise it. me if Eric wasn't absolutely a maniac in D&D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, then. So, um, I guess we're ready to recap. Okay. Nemi is summoning demons. Or devils. Fiends, at the very least. That's going to be interesting for the others to find out, but right Nemia, now we're clueless. Nemi are continuing to be a goddamn menace to anyone with, like, sensitivity to demons or fate or anything like that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Like, uh, Nemi is going to walk by a paladin and they're going to throw up. <laughs> apparently she has she usually summons like little imps but this time a duke of hell showed up and neither one was particularly happy about it um or knew how it happened uh he made some comment about her mother or claimed to have her there and uh, did not give answers to that because answers were given to something else i guess but after that little episode um there were rumors all over town that the Dawn Guard had cleared the Ash Gang from Accord. Um, there were also rumors of intruders in the Grand Cemetery. Hmm, we don't know anything about that. Um, that must be a plot hook for the future. Yeah, probably. We could just maybe leave it to another party of adventurers to investigate that one, though. Uh, we'll be good. Preferably uh, level two or below. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Um. Anyhow, uh, rumors also continued that the leader of the Ash Gang had been captured, but it was very vague, so we don't know for sure. Uh, Nemia has a garden insignia from uh, Port Villard on hand due to a little pip pocketing. Um, ran into Zare, we kind of caught up on that werewolf uh, thing. There was this kid at this tavern who um, did not realize that he was a werewolf. Uh, Sten was his name. No, wait, Sten was the hunter. Hector was the kid's name. I mixed up names in my notes, uh, just reading them. Um, the hunter of werewolves, some shady guy, Sten Greenbreaker, uh, was inquiring about these attacks, narrowed it down to Hector, um, Killian and Nemia managed to catch him chasing Hector down and ran him off instead and passed Hector along to Zare to go to the Starlight Troop and get some help. Um, we went off to New Haven where the Starlight Troop is currently camped to the south of the city but not for very much longer probably. Um, the council is absolutely full of many, many interesting names and persons. Bastion knows them. Uh, apparently yeah, I'm going to do my best to try to know any of them. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, and he was pushed by his dad to join this council at some point. And Ulf, Killian's uncle, is also there and enthusiastic about the idea of his nephew perhaps taking more of an interest. Meanwhile, Nemi and Elena, and Chili, of course, are, I think, just kind of enjoying the show, because that looks like it's as much of a show as we're likely to get. Although knowing Eric. Hmm. We'll, uh, we'll see. So guys, place your bets. <sighs> is the roof going to cave in, or is someone going to come through the wall? <laughs> I'm, I'm halfway convinced someone's going to, someone in the council is going to do something and teleport out. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, okay, so, okay, two other options, up from under the ground, or, like, <laughs> ripping themselves out of a council member. Ooh, Ooh that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> I'd be surprised if it was, like, tearing, like, through fabric space and time, because, again, Eric, but... <laughs> I did try and swear off timey time stuff, so... Mm, please. We'll see. Okay, fine. Okay, fine, just space. <laughs> if, you're, if you're gonna do it again, make Bastion work, have to deal with that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Devin, you don't want me to have to deal with that stuff because you'll get frustrated. Mm, yes. <laughs> Fine, Nick. Yes. It'll be at least fun. <laughs> yeah, that's true. 
<laughs> Nick will go with some creative bullshit that none of us see coming. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So. Um, as you are, you took your seats in the chamber, and you are kind of just waiting for things to come to order. Uh, a handful of other people kind of fill in, fill in around you. Um, not not a big batch of people, but just a, a lot more, um, I would say, affluent people. Um, definitely mostly nobles. Yes, just lesser nobles, people with lots of money. Killing's gonna oh. can <laughs> give a quick scan to make sure there's not anyone in particular. Of course, that particular person is not here. Awesome. <laughs> Okay. okay. Uh, all right. So there's a quiet conversation going on amongst various people. Um, you have a chance to look around the room uh, along the outside wall of the council chamber. Uh, stands uh, where stands? Yeah, stands sixty. Or, bleh, sorry, forty statues. Um, there's thirty-four guards surrounding the chambers, statues of guards surrounding the chambers, and up by what would presumably be the throne if there was a king. Um, there are uh, six statues of the leaders of the past, the, the original, you know, six founders, so to say, of the Valnari Union. Um, you know, the, there was, uh, you know, the countries were different back then when the Valdemar Union was founded. Um, you know, the Elven and Dwarven kingdoms, you know, still exist. Elendir existed. Um, the Old Kingdom was still a thing, being probably one of the oldest kingdoms in the world, to be honest. Um, there was... So the, the Valdemar Union was founded um, you know over 2,000 years ago as a response to the growing threat of Volt as it sought to expand its empire to you know, take over the world um, the then king of the old kingdom uh, Hakon Uris gave up his throne or he gave up the succession of his throne to to form this council um, and you know to get the other leaders of the countries to agree. Um, so you know the six leaders are kind of emblazoned there as a tribute. Small uh, request. You know. Yes. Um, for like those kind of particular names or whatever, can you type yep. them in the chat for the spelling and such? Yep, yep. Just, uh, there is apostrophes in this, but I'm not going to bother trying to figure that out. Hmm. Uh, so hey, Conyers, you know the last king, last official king of the Old Kingdom. Uh, say, hey, God, I think you're about to call my name. <laughs> <laughs> um, then we have Dalzad Goldpike uh, was a, a Lord of Ironhold. Uh, we have Nilotharia Silverwood. And these are all founder founders? Yes, these are the original, these were the leaders of the six countries. Or the, yeah, six countries that formed this union. I am uh, not keeping up with this. Who was Dalzad Goldpike? So, uh, Dalzad Goldpike, Goldpike uh, was a lord of Ironhold. Okay. The dwarf. The, the dwarf Ironhold. Uh, Nilotharia is... Uh, oh god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't write that fast. No, no worries. I keep much uh, doing it by hand. Yeah, um, she was the of the Valandori elves. <laughs> Lots of names, yes. Uh, so, quick note on the Valandori elves. Um, originally, there you know, there's kind of there's two sets of elves. There's the Eldori and the Endori. Um, they used to be one, but when uh, the Brightlands was kind of created, the, the country of the Brightlands. A group of the elves 
joined with them and left the Valandori, so that's why they're kind of separate. Uh, they used to be so, one, though. So the Valandori are the precursor, then? Yeah, they used to be okay. the, the the grand, like, the, the, the big group of moon elves. Gotcha, okay. Um, then they kind of split apart. Um, the other ones are the ones that moved to the Bright Lands, specifically? Yeah, so, yeah, so they don't have a representative here because they are part of the, the Bright Lands. And not, okay, good. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the, the group of elves that kind of split off, um, they they're kind of use their forest, or they willingly use their forest as you know resources to help you know build you know weapons, boats, things that were needed to fight off the threat of vaults. Um, whereas the the Eldori elves, you know, their their forest was sacred and they wouldn't give it up. Mm. That's kind of the, the there's more to it than that, but that's the the big overarching uh, differences. Otherwise, they're all still moon elves. Um, moon elves, as in one particular race of elves. Yes. Okay. So things like dark elves or high elves or what elves are separate. Yeah. So uh, the moon elves are what you would typically refer to as high elves. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the clarification. <laughs> yep. Yes. Because I, because I know in other settings there are also moon elves that are particular from the rest of them. Mm. Yeah, for a second I was questioning if that's from Dragon Prince or not. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, where was I? Alright, so um, there was also... So the leader of Elendir was Eudora, Eudora Alar. Elendir. Uh. Elendir, yeah. So this is kind of like the magical island. It's got ah, the, the. I was trying to what the leader represented by was. Oh yeah. Um, you know they've long been a, a magical nation. You know there's a, a magic college there. There's you know a bardic college there. Um, uh, that's where all that. Okay. Yes. I'm sure what you're saying. No, I was just gonna say it's kind of a an island of plenty. They have a lot of excess. Is there a particular race? Is it more mixed? It is. It's a mix. Um, you might find a lot more uh, half elves than there than you might elsewhere, but it's still it's a good it's a good solid mix. Half elves. Is, is that like yeah. from a from being part near one of the mood elves areas or? Uh, no, not in particular. There, there's there's groups of elves outside of their respective you know countries, so okay. to say. It just there happens to be, you know, half elves congregate there basically. Yeah, they're they're accepted there more widely accepted than in other places. Okay, so other thing for setting record is that half elves do have that kind of odd one out. Yeah, just status. a little. I mean, most half races do. Okay. So, um, tieflings are still you know they're they're out there a bit. People. You know, the, the 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 country bumpkin might be afraid of a tiefling, thinking that they're an actual fiend. Anyone in the council giving Nemia a weird, weird look? <laughs> um, not in particular. Um, in larger cities, there are larger populations of the uh, minorities, so to speak. Yeah. So it's 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 still uncommon, but it's you know, no one is actively like watching her. To make sure she's not doing anything sneaky. An oddity and nothing more. Yeah, basically. All right. Um, and then, so the last two people are from countries that no longer exist. Um, so there used to be the country of Katola that... Um, actually, let's see. Hold on. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. The information on it no longer exists as well. No, no, no. I, I, I'm going to show you the map real quick just to give you an idea of what Ooh, it okay. used to be. Uh, so the okay, so the marshlands to the north um, used to be part of Katola. Um, so you know this whole region up up north of New Haven, um, the this kind of river delta to the west of the Felgate used to also be part of Katola. And then kind of this this area right here. So like this, this that big old area used to be Katola. So when 
Um, so would it be like kind of like bordered by the rivers then? Yeah, more or less. So like roughly that or something? Uh, a little bit farther, actually, to the actual, the, the larger river over, yeah. Yeah, basically. Not crossing the mountains, but straight up. Uh, here. Yeah. Where's my cursor? There it is. Okay. What was the leader of Kotola again? I have not given the name yet. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. I thought for sure that I'd missed it, because usually it's the name first and then the country, and I'm going, no, oh, no. Because I, I wanted to describe what Katola was before oh, okay. giving a name. Um uh, during during the war, unfortunately, uh, Katola did fall, and so the land's kind of owned by it. Um, the larger portion of it got split off into the marshlands, or you know, more formally, is the Katola marshlands. Um, part of it got absorbed into the Brightlands, and this this kind of river delta actually got absorbed into um, the country of Novgorod, which is you know separate entity. Uh, the leader is or was i should say are now cambra and uh katola lost to who exactly volt okay yes and so and so the area that is katola was right to those three places and yeah. there's so the, the, there's this kind of area that was absorbed by volts uh, Novgrad took over a portion of it, and the rest of it fell into kind of new countries. And we'll hear about Novgrad in just a moment. Uh, I yes. Assume. Okay. Nov Novgrad is not an official part of the Union, but there is a an emiss emissary there currently. Right. right. Um, the last country is uh, Soulhaven, which is kind of. The area that has become, you know, the 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 country of New Haven, and the kind of the rest of the Brightlands, um, they were absorbed together, created the Brightlands, and then they specifically carved out that chunk of of land for you know the Union capital and surrounding areas. Um, I assume the Brightlands is like here. here. You know what? Some of you would be vaguely familiar with geography. I think I have. I do have one. Oh, perfect. Okay, boom. Here we go. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, that's so much. That is much easier. Thank you. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I remember I prepared this a while ago, but I, I haven't like referred back to it in a while. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Here you go. Okay, this so, yeah. makes a lot more sense now. So green areas are like overarching regions. Blue separates kind of the individual. Uh, not the green ones. No. All I see is blue titles. Yep. Oh, that's it. Oh that's shit. True. Uh, let me check on that. Oh shoot. Okay, hold on. UGM layer. You guys... We might not have known it. I yeah. No, but you guys, it would be. It should be known. All right. Ooh. Oh, okay. Oh. There's the puzzle Ooh. pieces. Yes. yes. So, okay. All right. This is so green, much easier. So this great big green region here is basically the Union. And yes. All the pieces. Okay. okay. If you've got a title for that, we get to the title. Uh, title for what? Like the big areas. You want to say um, oh no! This is this is this was okay, my sorry. when I was setting everything up. I I, I kind of separated the individual states. Okay. Just want to check. Yeah. So, um, so, how many capitals do you guys think we're going to be part of? Either being burnt down or burnt down next year. <laughs> Look, as long as I get to be the one to do one of them. <laughs> so, um, hold on. Let me. Okay. So, the the leader of Soulhaven was Lucia White Oak. Look, just tell me Volt is secretly run by Tiamat and just point kill in any direction, <laughs> and we'll be good. Uh. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, so yeah, uh, the union was formed um, towards the end of the Third Age, uh, you know, more commonly, colloquially, however you want to say that, uh, known as the Age of Dragons. Mm. Um, the following age was known as the Age of Destruction because there was a series of 
just cataclysmic world events. You know, earthquakes, plagues, uh, you know, giant yeah. hordes of undead waking in a titan trying to destroy the world. Cough, cough. Wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> uh, current age is commonly known as the Age of Man. Um, as some of the elder races uh, seem to be in decline, why while the age of uh, or the, the the kingdoms of men are thriving. Um, interesting fact: the old kingdom was actually founded towards the end of the first age, so they have been around for thousands and thousands of years. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, back to the council room. Uh, bu- 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 yeah. So, um, you know, as I said before, uh, Hakon relinquished. You know, the leader of the old kingdom relinquished his, you know, succession of kingship um, to get these leaders to agree to unite to stop bolts before they became uh, too big of a threat. Um, they were successful, obviously, uh, the union still exists, in kind of uh, stopping the the threat from spreading into the union, though a lot of land was lost. Did, you um, Did you guys drop? No, no, I, no? we hear I'm you. You can still hear me, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Um, can he hear us? Can you hear us? Test, test, test. I hear you. I hear you, but uh, okay. Maybe you crashed out. Maybe. Oh, technology! His download died before his upload died, so we heard him. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. Um. Well, I guess I'll give him a second before continuing, but. Ugh. Um, you just briefly explains. I guess just as a um, curiosity, where did the like line of land kind of decay uh, with the uh, vault? Say that again. Like, like you said, land was lost against vault. Um, where did it oh, used yes. to be? So, to uh, so vault time used to kind of. Uh, Where's my cursor? Here it is. Uh, so Westerly, Northvale, Voltheim, kind Hold of. Hmm. Voltheim looks vaguely familiar. Mm-hmm. I was about to ask mm-hmm. if anyone else thought so. Oh, yeah. So down there? Say that again? Is it upside down? I remember the mountains being on the top. It is you. You're on a different continent, so it is not the same. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Karen, right. Eric, Eric says a thing for dragons in the desert. I do. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Just okay, what's that thing though? Um. And can, fun we, island. can we go kill something on it? Yeah. That's right? where you go to find a korok seed. <laughs> yeah, I was say, it's like Legend of Zelda Island. You've got to hop between each of the islands around it first, though. Mm-hmm. And then you uh, have to get to the middle one, and you have to dive from a high place into a little ring of lily pads. Yep. <laughs> oh, you okay. can dive in those! I've been throwing rocks in them! <laughs> no! Oh. Jump! To, to continue what I was saying. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Westerly, oh, sorry. Westerly, Voltheim, Northvale, Grells, that used to be kind of their territory. The Summerlands, Reach, and Volt Ice Waste um, were not originally their territory. Um, Volt Ice Waste are, were, was formerly part of the Old Kingdom. That is the contested, uh, the highly contested area that um, many people want to see brought back into the Old Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, one of the, you know, one of the you know, kind of the noble houses of the old kingdom supposedly vanished. They that was their kind of their chunk of land. One of the houses. Yes. Which one? Um, the one uh, I, I believe we talked about this um, house, oh. Ander. 
under here blah, 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 before I before I go down too far. Uh, yes, so um, you know the, the the name kind of was thought was dead, but they had secretly escaped and were hidden, you know, somewhere in the reach in the Summerlands before you know they came back to the old kingdom and announced, you know, and that was true performance. That was that one that one person who came. Yes. Okay. 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 Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I, I won't be like the most. Like I'm, I'm basically trying to put, like, construct the little tower yep. of information in my head right now. No, oh, yeah, there's, there's a, there is a lot to absorb and learn. <laughs> hmm. I'm doing my best to memorize it visually rather than name wise, because I know if one is a lost cause. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, so, what do you guys think? Level seventeen, Killian will be able to take the ice waste back. <laughs> Hold on. Remember who's running this? Thirteen at best. Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna have that long. I mean, okay. Uh, to be fair, I don't want. I don't necessarily need to be there to do it. Yeah. If we, if we get into season three and it's like, yeah, this one crazy dude just like tore through, I'll be happy. <laughs> fair enough. Either. Oh, is that Nick Mac? Hey. Yeah. Nick. All right. I don't know what happened. <laughs> um. Let's see. Additional. Oh, so this little patch of forest right here. Right where? This, this is By where. where? Oh, sorry. This patch of area right here. There we go. There we go. <laughs> this is the uh, uh, where the Endor elves are. Okay. Okay, those ones that were brought in. Yeah, so they split off from the Eldorai and joined with the Brightlands. There. Um, so that the big chunk of forest that stretches up towards New Haven was originally part of their forests, but they kind of ceded that for use for you know use by the union to do what they need to do to build defenses and stuff. Okay, I'm gonna I'm trying to put things together, so I might ask a stupid question. Brightlands no. are or not part of um, the uh, council? They are. Okay. Um, uh, Lady Lady Cecilia is their current representative. Okay. And that is actually where you've been for the most part is in the Brightlands, and you're now in New Haven. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. She's she's called Lady of Brighton, so it's confusing. Yeah, that's the town. Yeah, it should be Brightlands. Yeah. New York. New York. More right here. Um. Actually, I think you started right here. No, we were that far south. I thought it was just one little patch of forest, and then whoop. Oh, you're oh. right. We went to Accord. Yep. Yep. Ah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yep. You yeah. went up into that forest, and then yep. Okay, and sorry, on, on the map, the elves that broke off from the main group mm -hmm. and are willing to use their forest for resources is over here. Here. Yep. Just this one. They they, they completely the... abandoned this land of forest up here. Yes, yeah, so they, they gave up this part of the forest. Then. Okay. Okay, yeah. for, like, resources and stuff. Yes, and uh, and also this this land right here, the, the forest land used to be bigger, but, you know, has been declining over the years. They've been using it. Yeah, and, which actually, and over there is the uh, this area is the ones who didn't break off. No, they have their own country, Eldorai. Okay, okay, okay. That's why I was. Yeah. Yep. And oh, those ones are all sacred and everything. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, question. Really quick. Um, can I roll history to know if it's if that forest was given as peacefully as it's being implied? Uh, yeah, or, no, or it was, yeah, it was. It was absolutely. There was a great divide between the elves, as you know, part of the elves wanted to do their part. You know, they needed to help, or else they were going to be overrun themselves. And the other part refused to give up their land. So the Eldorai kept their land. Eldorai split off and willingly gave them or relinquished control of the forest. And this was over the worry of Volt. Yes. So, you know, thousands of years ago. Uh, you might find that since the forest is declining, um, current people might not be too happy about that. Current elves might not be happy about mm -hmm. that. Kind of that, uh, per like, a uh, people's history um, divide kind of thing. Yeah. Like, they understand why it happened, but now, like, they're losing more and more, and it's not stopping, and it's kind of like, well, shit. <laughs> In general, do the uh, uh, the two elves get along, or is there, like, a salt between them? 
as uh, as all elves are, they are regal and formal and nice on the face. But there is some bad, a little bit of bad blood. Not not so much as to go to war because that is kind of uh, a we, concept. Of we, we ain't talking old kingdom and vault here, but <laughs> yes. But there is kind of you know they'll they'll throw shade at one another. Okay. We'll talk down about each other. Might might hear some snipes here and there during other political meetings. Mm -hmm. I'll be fine. Sorry. One second. One second, guys. Sure, Bob. Trying so hard with these names. <laughs> I'm doing better with the um, like knowing the uh, the the like basically like the a quality of the, the context. People. Yeah. Yeah, like, that, that's easy. But when I, whenever it's going to be referenced, I'm sure it's going to be by name. Yep. So I'm trying to memorize it as best I can. Well, I, I'm kind of personally expecting myself to kind of learn the names to tie them with the little concepts I'm building up in my head right now. So like, like, like Volt, I've got locked in. Old Kingdom, obviously locked in. Ironhold being the dwarves isn't too hard. Yeah. The Indorai and Eldorai are gonna fuck with me, though. Hmm. Yeah, I'm basically treating them as Guthyanka gets their eye at this point. Hmm. Alrighty, sorry, we had to have an in-depth discussion about body pillows. <laughs> what? Yes. She, 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 you know, she needs one to support her belly. Okay. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> I thought you meant like the anime kind. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I was like, excuse me? Actual. Is, is, that, is that why she only lets leave for three hours? Is she just to cuddle someone else while you're gone? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, uh, any other questions about the map before we continue? I think that you probably um, won't get to you in the next little bit. Yeah. Oh, one, uh, sorry. Yes. Uh, is the city I was in in New Haven or the Brightlands? Because it's like right New Haven. Over. It was New in New Haven, Haven, technically? Okay. Yes. Because, you know, uh, your, your, your family is a political family, and anyone yeah. who anyone is going to live in New Haven to be near the capital. Okay, just want to check. Um, and I guess just for spacing, um, Killian's uh, Killian's spot in the Old Kingdom was it like right where the name is, or? Let's go back to the other map. All right. Oh, never mind. <laughs> gotcha. See it right there. there. Yeah, there's your castle, and there's the capital of the Old Kingdom. <laughs> gotcha. Yep. Okay. 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 All right. Um, are we good here? Good here? Yeah. Okay. Back, oh, I guess I should hop on that page, too. Uh, I should put this on loop. There we go. Okay. So uh, after taking a moment to kind of see the history uh, present in the chamber, um, the 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 session kind of comes to order. Um, there's some formal announcements made, just vague how the proceedings are going to go. Um, we're going to hear from each of the regions. Um, then each of the uh, union representatives will have a chance to chime in. Um, and then they will address... Um, there's like a couple of concerns, uh, a few concerns to address amongst uh, people that have come to the council and then a couple of or a few foreign ambassadors that have come to speak with the council uh, after all of that the, the the council will kind of convene to um, decide on what the next steps will be what kind of actions will be taken and so forth um <laughs> um got it or, for for the um, for those that don't know, there's 
uh, there is 10 people on the council, but um, the three uh, union representatives, uh, you know, Thorok, Praxis, and uh, Oderson, they, they don't each have a singular vote. The three kind of um, talks amongst each other, and you know, majority of them decide where their the one vote for the union goes. Okay. So they kind of comprise one vote. Um, uh, Bastion, you would know that Oderson has not been a very vocal member of the of the group, and typically just falls in line with Praxis. So. Uh, in most scenarios, Praxis has the singular vote from the Union. Um, the uh, is Thorak just kind of overruled? Or does he tend to like uh, go against? He tends to follow with Praxis too. They 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 they're they're old timers. They they've been through a lot together. Looking uh, at his description, it seems like he just tends to fall in line ideologically with Praxis. So yeah. So there's no conflict there. Um, it very rarely ever do the three votes not coincide. So, is the reason for them th for the three of them being here because of like where the council meeting is being held? Yeah. So because the the New Haven is not, it's not its own country. It's just kind of the central region of the union. So while they they get a vote just based purely purely on how many people live here it is probably the most one of the most populated regions of the union probably the least but, unified yeah there, there's a lot of a lot of all the other regions are here in new haven uh, but there is you know the 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 council is here the the people that control trade and coin and the military are here so they all have kind of their their take on things so i guess on that thing like if there were to have to be like a, a union meeting like say in the old kingdom or in uh elder eye or something would all three of those guys in the back go there um there is all formal council meetings are held here okay um there are informal events that are usually just to garner support for ideas so you know um political feast thrown. yeah just to flip the people that are maybe undecided on certain things to garner support um, right. yeah so that, that that's the general uh, overarching view of it um there's not been a lot of dissent in recent times. Um, if they're all pretty unified on what they're trying to do to keep the country operating. Um, and I guess one last thing, in modern times, like obviously there's an emissary of Volt sitting here. Um, mm -hmm. all right, what, what's, what's the general feeling on them like at the current moment, like in the climate, I guess? Um, so they are a trade partner of the union um there are those that don't like volts uh, you know the the dwarves of iron holds you know live long lives many of them uh, you know their their great grandfather fought them in the war stuff like that um obviously ulf is not a fan um the elves are indifferent as in all things <laughs> um so overall, everyone is indifferent, and they are a trade partner. Uh, just there's a few key people that are not fans. Okay. okay. Um, all right. The session is called to order after the general proceedings um, you know, is described and explained of what's going to happen. Um, they call up, you know, the first council member to speak, um, and it's. Uh, uh, the Lady of the Marshlands. Um, uh, she goes into this long speech about how um, they've kind of they've been lacking the military support they've needed for you know maybe a few years now. They have you know they've been formally requesting more military presence there, 
uh, you know, they're, they're plagued by pirates, orc bandits, you know, creatures on land and sea. And they, they've just been, they've really been lacking the support they need to, to handle that kind of thing. You know, they've had the wayward adventurer, um, their adventuring parties try to go out and clear these things out, but there's uh, too few heroes, too much, uh, too many creatures, too many things plaguing them. Um, no, this is all recorded. Uh, there, there's an official recorder. Um, no one uh, they use on a regular basis. It's just someone that works for the, 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 the government will sit in and records everything. They take down all these notes um, and, you know, the, the, to add it to kind of the bill, the list of discussion points to talk on later. Um, you know, so the Lady of the Marshlands uh, requests the, um, you know, a, a detachment of uh, maybe more active military members. You know, typically it's just guards, but to actually formally an active military unit to go and try and clear out all these threats. Um, and that's kind of that. That's the, the the resolution they put up on their uh, on the docket. Um, there's you know there's murmurs amongst the crowd. Um, she you know she takes her seat once more. Um, then they they recognize the next person. Um, they call on you know the Lord of Elendir, uh, Melborn. Um, he goes into this eloquent, long-winded speech about the. Uh, the bounties that his land has, and they're ripe with magic, and all this stuff. You know, just you know, very. He's very boisterous about his country, and kind of all, almost to the point of rubbing it in your face. Um, but you know, at the end, he says, "Unfortunately, um, a plague has spread through the land, and we have made all efforts to con to contain and control its spread." But um, this does mean that you know trade and travel has been severely limited. Um, we will not be able to uh, keep up our level of support to the Union as we deal with this threat. And we would like to submit a request for you know, financial and medical support. Um, you, know, you can see the court recorder kind of furiously scrawling this down. Um, yeah, so it's just going to go, you know, one down the line, each country is going to present, you know, current issues and what they need. Um, they go next to the Lord of Ironhold, Dalian Bronzehammer. Um, you see him pull himself up. Um, he's getting on in years. And there's a little bit of a, a wobble as he stands up and gets his, gets his footing. Um, he is not as eloquent and he jumps straight to the heart of things um, and he tells the group that you know there's been damage to many of our uh, main veins of ore uh, but we are repairing and exports should continue soon but until that time um, precious metals will be uh, limited in trade uh, uh, does Bastion know if they supply mostly precious metals or if it's all kinds of metals all kinds. Um, the okay. the mines of Ironhold are extensive. Okay, they so have, a lot of the I assume weapon grade metal comes from them too. Yep. No. Yeah. So you know they, they produce a lot of steel, uh, okay. steel iron. They also ha supply a lot of the uh, you know gold and silver that gets you know gold, silver, um, copper that that gets in turn supplied to you know. The, the the coin and minted into actual currency, so the, the, there's a big implication for you know slowing down that. Um, he does not put forth any formal request though. He just you know he explains the situation, and being the proud dwarf that he is, takes a seat once more. <laughs> um. No. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay.
immediately went like, hmm, technically I can produce metal from nothing. On a small scale. But, because I'm sure a hundred silver pieces worth of raw iron ore is decent size-wise. Start a small church in there. Turn it into like a mercenary guild for making metal. Oh, sorry about that. All right. Bug killing duties. Ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, the true husbandly duties. Okay, uh, where was I? Uh, iron cold. Okay, fishing. yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, after, it's probably, you know, all the talking, it's probably been about, you know, 30 minutes of discussion so far. Um, there's a, there's a few moments where um, the council is talking amongst themselves that no one is directly addressing the group. Yeah, no, it's, you know, the, the, just a quick 10 minutes for each, each person. If, um, if they were given longer, uh, this session would take an exorbitant amount of time. <laughs> Around the 28 minute mark, Killian, like, he'll roll a piece of, like, maybe, like, paper or lint or something he found and just kind of try to flick it towards Lena. <laughs> <laughs> Past Nemia. Yep. Yeah, Nemia's short enough. Okay. Maybe maybe like through through the horns. A yes, bit. field goal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what happens when we sit in the back of the room? Mm -hmm. I should, can Bastion try to get a read on the lady you're sitting in front of? Sure. Um, she, she seemed particularly you... interested in a uh, person speaking. Um, give me insight. I mean, so I mean, it's she looks, she looks scholarly. Okay. So she she seems to have just you know, the passing you know interest of knowledge in what people saying, yeah, but no one in particular that you can make out. Okay. She's I mean, not like were, writing notes or anything, is she? She is not. Okay. Bastion. Um, probably when, uh, does uh, the Eldore, the Eldore take the full 30 minutes? So, um, the, we've taken, there's like a quick five minute break and the Eldore are next. Okay. Um, during that he'll kind of just tap on the lady's shoulder and say, yeah, there. She turns around and like, like, oh. You don't seem like a council member. Sorry, say that again? I missed it. You don't seem like a council member. No, I'm just here to... Oh, I've got something to present to the council. I've got... So, I need their approval. Do you mind my asking? I'm kind of curious. Oh, um, well... I'm trying to set up a school for magic. You have it? Um, not specifically here. I mean... I've pinpointed a couple areas where kind of the she she goes to like she motions a little bit like of our, of like her hands crossing like where the I guess where magic would be stronger. That's how, how I can explain it. We have a few areas. I just need full council permission. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Would it be helpful to all types of magicians? I know wizard is the most studious generally, but yeah. um, typically. Arcane, are those that use the arcane to cast magic. Think it's gonna go through? I hope so. I mean, there's a there's already a big uh, college on Elendir that I'm sure would be opposed to another uh, a competitor in the region, but we'll we'll see. Fingers crossed. As well. Just gonna give a smile and clean back into his seat. Uh, 
During the bread kill, he might also just be glancing around. Does he recognize, like, either the person or, like, any insignia or anything on them for either this person or this person? The two other tokens. So, you know Aurora. You, you've, you've met her. Yeah. Ah, yes. My bad. Yep. So, you've met Aurora once. Um, the other person, you... No, you don't recognize. Okay. Um, so, you know, after the brief five minutes, um, you know, the Lady of Eldorai um, stands up. Um, she goes into a kind of long, little bit long-winded, eloquent speech about, um, you know, you know, sacred forests are alive and thriving. Um, there's um, been talk of our nation in decline, but we are strong as ever. Um, you you do glance a couple of the Elgard um, in kind of the, the, the corridor closest to her. Um, those are kind of like their official guards. Uh, yeah, those two right there. Um, they're 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 a uh, an Eldorai Dawn Guard equivalent. Um, most nations have kind of this elite unit of elite elite group of soldiers. Um, not as numerous, but you know, much more well trained. Um, um, towards the end of her speech, though, uh, the Lady of Eldorai. Uh, does bring up that there has been um, a lot of there's been a lot of unauthorized uh, logging done and taking of trees, and you know, given the location of it, um, they can only surmise that it is someone from the Brightlands, and that uh, reparations must be made. You know, and they ask for um, you know, that's for money and. Uh, resources to help you know protect and defend the land um it's not asked in a like we're going to go to war kind of way but it is there is the very real threat of action should she not be heeded i want to speak to your manager <laughs> yeah yes basically it's, how it's are you going to make this right yeah Make this right, or I will make it right. Yeah. That, that's kind of the the, the uh, vibe you get from her. I kind of more want, at least initially, for like a criminal investigation kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Uh, she sits down. Uh, and the next is the Lord of Hill, uh, Lord of Hilltop, uh, Varen. Um, he, much like uh, Melbourne, Lord of Elendir. Um, goes into, you know, the, the gnolls have, they have excess, um, you know, business is booming. Um, Varen is, while also being a council member, he's well known to be the head of probably the largest tobacco business in um, the union. Um, so he is quite wealthy. Um, so he, he even brings up in his discussion is that, you know, his business is uh, booming, trade is, you know, fantastic. Um, the, the half guard um, is growing stronger, grows in strength every day. Uh, you know, the half guard was a little more, uh, a little more recently implemented as historically the halflings have not uh, had that kind of large military presence. They've just been, they, they've historically relied on uh, the borders keeping them safe and, you know, people outside. Um, you know, he finishes with, you know, all is quiet here and, you know, he has no uh, formal resolutions of his own. Tobacco ah, company, I see. huh? Tobacco company. I wonder if that was raised by the god of light or something. <laughs> Uh, what's wrong with the halflings? What do you mean? I don't know. I heard something about halflings and assumed there was trouble. I've got no idea what's going on right now. It was said they don't usually have the military strength that they currently are working towards because now there's actually becoming a proper guard of them. 
Yes. Okay, is there a reason why there's coming to be a proper guard of them? Is it um, just somebody sat down one day and said, you know what sounds fun? Or is it, you know, there's a problem. Just We're short people with swords. It's, it's, <laughs> it, it, it became a thing as... Uh, so without a formal guard of their own, they'd be completely and utterly reliant on the guards provided by the Union. Okay, but nothing big happened recently that made them kick. No. Okay. No, I get there's, what there's, I was assuming that I missed. Gotcha. If I could go out on a limb, I would think Hilltop like glanced over at like Elder Eye and like uh with the, with their like elf guard and then over <laughs> to the Haven with their like Dawn Guard and they're like, I want one. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yes, basically. <laughs> okay. And and the old kingdom with their entire population. <laughs> yes, basically. I mean, I would say a much larger portion of the old kingdom is willing to pick up an axe and fight than than the average you know population of other ki of other kingdoms. <laughs> I don't know. Halflings can be feisty. True, but they are much less in number so that there that there's of those that would be um it, it, in event of war I was there would be joke. oh okay sorry <laughs> it was i think that was the nessa reference <laughs> ah i see yes i i'm in history mode not not joke mode <laughs> sorry okay give them a big enough sword <laughs> yes and a friendly enough god R R three times the body height is the minimum <laughs> okay. Um, where was I? Um, Hilltop just got done talking about themselves. Ah, uh, the knolls. Okay. Um, next, uh, your uncle. Hey. <laughs> your uncle takes a stand, and immediately goes into this big-winded speech about the history of conflict between Volt and the Union. <laughs> Killian leans over to Nemia. Here he goes. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's like Volt has, ex has historically been our enemy. And they have, to this day, not relinquished any of the lands that have been taken from us. My ancestor did not give up his crown to get in bed with these filthy drakes. We oh, must man. demand this or we must reclaim it. And he puts forth that as his motion. And you, there's there's a little bit of an eye roll amongst some of the other members as this may not be the first time he's done such a thing. <laughs> Killian, like, if, if ever, like, his gaze meets off, he's just, like, he'll just give, like, a, like, yeah, you're doing great, bud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Half the speech is directed, just seething anger at Kessler. Mm-hmm. The, um, you know, Kessen, you can see him in his seat, you know, maybe a, a twinge of anger, but it's not his first, it's not his first time experiencing this. He's sitting, he's sitting, uh, Kessen is sitting there, like, dealing with the racist, uh, like, grandma mm -hmm. the, at the Thanksgiving yep. dinner. Yep. It's like, you're not happy, but also it's just like, okay, have, yep. your, have your meat, old man, and go sit down. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> okay. Okay, so you know he sub submits that as his formal request of the old kingdom. Um, okay, then um, before he uh, relinquishes his, um, yeah, you know, the 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 spotlight, um, he does call attention to Cecilia. Uh, he says he would like to formally welcome uh, Lady Cecilia, uh, newest member of the council. And there's a there's a light clap from everyone in the chamber, and you know he uh, he says uh, you know we hope you uh, will do well here, and you know he takes his seat and relinqu relinquishes it to Cecilia for her to go into the events of the Brightlands. So she begins with um, what you can tell is heavily memorized uh, description of trade and. Um, 
kind of just the general well-being of the country. You know, she was clearly prepped for this. Um, and, you know, she, she goes into the speech about how, you know, the Brightlands has also experienced um, some effects of piracy and uh, orc raiders. And that, you know, this is a, it's been a growing threat over the last you know, couple years. Um, and then she also mentions, you know, the Ash Gang about how, you know, they've been operating uh, far outside the range of the, the council of the New Haven. And that, you know, with recent events, you know, they've kind of hopefully eliminated that threat. And they will be able to more directly address some of the other problems within the break excuse me, within the Brightlands. Um, she she mentions that, you know, through coordinated efforts with the Dawn Guard, we have you know, captured their leader and most of their band. Um, you know, with our new resources, you know, we offer whatever aid we can, um, but we must rebuild from the damages of events that have transpired. Um, we will go into that... Uh, a little bit later in the session. Um, so she doesn't seem to put forth uh, a request for the Brightlands, but uh, you know, willingly offers up the aid of her country to help others in need. Um, and at this point, they, they take another little break um, before they get to the uh, foreign emissaries. Um, maybe a couple, a couple of council members leave to go uh, relieve themselves, take a break. Um, many of the visitors, uh, the noble people here, you know, talk, some, talk amongst themselves. Um, Ulf uh, comes over to you, Killian, and takes a seat by you. <laughs> says, so, what do you think? Oh, you're certainly practiced. It is not the first time I've made that speech. Oh, no. And I'd hear you all the way down the halls practicing, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I have not been home in some time. Um, give me news. He just kind of scratches the back of his head and is like, um, I'm, uh, I'm in a similar spot as you. Oh, is that so? Okay. In fact, I was I, well... about to ask you the same. <laughs> well, I've been been here for some time. Um, really, that's interesting. You seem to be following in my footsteps, footsteps rather than your father's. Uh, he chuckles a little bit at that. <laughs> he, he gives like a chuckle, but also a cringe. Um, I guess I'm figuring out exactly what footsteps I'm wanting to follow. Or maybe make my own. Of course, it is, you know, every man and woman's job to figure out their own path. I found mine, hopefully. Should these fools listen to me. No, it's, uh, look, if you're heading back anytime soon, I'm, uh, you, you might be better off saying you didn't meet me. <laughs> Ooh, that bad, huh? I don't know. <laughs> I just okay. kind of headed out. Okay. How's the missus? And he, he chuckles again. Kind of an iron creak of Ashen's head turning. <laughs> Lena oh, is showing oh, so turning. much more in uh, interest. <laughs> Lena like wakes up from a deep slumber. <laughs> Oh, Lana's been zoning out this entire time. She started paying attention when Lil' came over. thousands of years I lay dormant. <laughs> a new hand touches the beacon. <laughs> if it was a dog or a cat, the ears would have just gone fully erect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just... He just kind of like sweats for a second and just like... Uh, well, I mean, she's aware that I headed out too. It's. I want to say I cut myself off. And just. I've been. Like I said, trying to figure things out a bit easier. Learn about myself. 
Okay. I mean, look, I'm not one to push political marriages. And I don't think, I don't think uh, my brother would either. But, you know, with her at your side, there's a... You have a, you would have support of basically all of the old kingdom for uh, being leader, being king someday, perhaps. He nods, and he's. I guess for anyone else looking, um, Killian Lee is just he's holding himself just a little bit different now. Can I insight check, please? I mean, yeah. And uh, no, no, <laughs> I got nothing. He's he's acting different than usual. That's it. Yeah. Um, just like he he just like nods along. He's like, yeah, I, I'm well aware. Bastion might actually walk around the back of these benches. Just kind of step forward, like. There's a glance over, like, a, you fucking say anything and you're dead. Pippi kind of just nods and says, um, forgive me if I got the wrong title, but, um, Lord Ulf? Nice to meet you. He, you know, a strong arm clap with you. Nice to meet you. Traveling companions of my nephews? Uh, Nephew? Yeah. More of a, a retinue to make sure that he, uh, well, we tend to follow him, usually. Speak to yourself. <laughs> Oh, he's, he's quick. Can't deny that. Yeah, um, I can be quicker. Oh, true. <laughs> Ulf, Ulf chuckles at this. I like that one. But, um... Sorry, I have to ask. I'm not as familiar with the old blood as I should be. Um... What's Bastion's relation? Sorry, not Bastion, it's Killian's. <laughs> Fuck, now I'm doing it! <laughs> <laughs> well... I, I am not one to spill secrets if uh, my nephew hasn't told you. Perhaps you haven't asked hard enough. I know he's some kind of royalty, but um, he I don't is know the details. He is a descendant of the last king of the old kingdom, the last true king of the old kingdom. Your brother and... is mistaken. Sorry, say that again. Your brother, if I'm not mistaken, right? My younger brother is currently king. Not formally, though. He, he is the leader of our kingdom, but he is not recognized as a king due to the... You know, when, when the union was created, he, he gave all that up. But by blood, our family has the right... So, Interesting. Yeah. He's and a prince. He uh, carries himself like one. <laughs> uh, with uh, great confidence. This is the word of choosing eye. <laughs> Ulf is like, he kind of leans into you a little bit, Killian. You get along with this guy? There is a confirmative deny of a step on Ulf's <laughs> foot. <laughs> <laughs> Does Bastion hear this? Um, he's not terribly quiet about it, so yeah, you'd hear it. Okay, he kind of smiles and says, "I'm unfortunate enough to manage to do my best to." I'm working to surpass friends. him. That, oh. and that you see a a confused look from Ulf because he is used to you being pretty much the strongest guy in the room. You know, it's, it's, this guy, this guy's got underhanded shit. I have blessings from uh, uh, divine figures, which Bastion, uh, Killian Puck, is working to uh, supersede on his own merits. <laughs> Old gods or the new? He asked. I'm, to my research, older than most of the old gods. It's <laughs> more of a concept. Okay. I'm not a super I, religious man myself. I assumed so. as much. I basically worship the the forge, the idea of creation and building okay. something better. I have heard of 
smiths with such faith. Okay. Oh, are they common in the Old Kingdom? I haven't met one yet. I said heard of. <laughs> oh, I was hoping you... Could, no, like, no, no one... No, nothing specific. But steel in our no. hands gotta come from somewhere. Exactly. I'm more of... The old gods. Belief in the old gods myself. But it is a... Family tradition, so to speak. Makes sense. I've heard, I think... Was that the that conversation? With the uh, whole different houses with wolves and like I don't remember if Bastion was there for that I don't either uh nope that was just Killian and Lena because okay. it was about uh families and histories and so on and so forth which uh, is very much sorry. what Killian's trying to dig up yeah I got distracted like for like mm -hmm. 10 seconds can we rewind it That's... um I, I, still say I was muted sorry um I got distracted for like 10 seconds. Can we like roll back a bit? I think I missed something. Nope, it was uh, yeah, just, I was, I was just a character question. question. Okay. Uh, yeah, Ulf, Ulf brought up that he, you know, believed in the old gods. It's more of a family tradition thing. Yeah, I, and, yeah, uh, I fell off like right before there. I was asking if I was there for the conversation with the whole wolf family thing. Mm. Um, but he'll say, huh, I honestly can't say much about it. I'll have to ask Killian someday. <laughs> I don't know how much of that he retained. He was more partial to the blade. Okay. I've certainly seen that. <laughs> Just, um, well, um, it was a pleasure meeting you. Um, I have some other people to talk to, unfortunately. Um, but I believe uh, Lady Cecilia has been waiting to speak with you. <laughs> as oh. she's kind of been eyeing you guys every now and then, kind of waiting for Ulf to leave. <laughs> Killing yells over, he's not that scary, you can just come over. <laughs> Bastion does spend a cute and apologetic smile. Um, she'll walk over. Um, you know, Ulf will say, you know, you know, it's a pleasure to have you. Um, yeah. we'll talk more in a bit. Don't be too, just like don't, on the shoulder. Yeah, don't be too rough with my nephew. He says, and then he'll, he'll walk away. He wishes. Not <laughs> once. Um, yeah. So, you know, Cecilia, say. You know, Good to see you all again. I'm glad you can make it. I see. Did, uh, have things gotten figured out back there yet? Yeah, I, I believe we've captured... I, I, it's safe to assume not all. You said the but... leader. Does that mean one? Which one? Yeah, uh, one of the leaders. I, I'm assuming the primary leader. Um, Which one was this? Oh, it's um, a tiefling lady. Hmm. That was the one that Bastion spoke to, right? Yes. I can talk to the tiefling, Killian, talk to the sorcerer. Okay, yeah, okay. Yes, yes. And I was like, so, um, we, we didn't get the most time to explain it, but, um, I mean, you got, uh, where we know there was at least two in that town on that night. It's possible that by capturing one leader, that the other faction has won. Well, do you remember uh, that uh that that one lady who was tossing fire? Yes. In the case? So we have discovered some things ourselves. Um, it'll be brought up shortly, but um, kind of behind the scenes, there was another group kind of controlling. The Ash Gang. Uh, of course. Of course, because, you know, they're just a group of thugs. What, what, what could they do? Um, and I'd been meaning to speak with you about it, because this, this group is very ominous sounding. Um, Got a name? They're called the Cult of the Eternal Flame. <laughs> Fucking... <laughs> Can Bastion roll history religion on that? Um. Sure, it would be history. Okay. But it don't. Yeah, no, it's not ring any bells. Okay, just I'm generally concerned whenever a 
fiery religion comes up that implies that it's very, very ancient. Mm. So what do you say in that all the little gangs we ran into across the way are all have their strings connected to one hand? Uh, that's what we believe, or what we've come to believe. The, um, the leader that we've captured, she has been surprisingly cooperative about tracking down the other individual. I'm guessing there's go. some was... bad blood between them. And more than more than some. Well, it works to our benefit. You have, there's not some sort of uh, cinder gang as well as some sort of flame gang or coal gang or something to go alongside the ash. <laughs> or the ash gang the remnants of the coal. <laughs> oh, um... No, 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 nothing so obvious. <laughs> they call themselves the Cult of the Eternal Flame, or whatever. I can't, I can't give them credit for their uh, subtlety. I, I don't fully know their beliefs, but they're dangerous is what I would call them. So. How, how'd you deal with the occupying forces? Uh, a handful of Dawn Guard and a, you know, a, a good regiment of troops was enough to clear out what remained and a lot of bodies um it probably was our biggest loss in some time but there have been worse and how many of the bastards did you take down did she take down yeah. the, the group in general oh so how much did the, the gang take down how, um, how much how much did like how many ash gang did they kill basically oh okay so um they said uh, we killed probably about 30 or so of them ended up um dead many more injured um the rest were actually captured and you know alive captured alive so they have something upwards of 120 people in in prison, imprisoned what the hell from you the ash. All of them. We don't know yet. It is a large group of people, and not all of them were directly involved with death and murder and destruction. Some were just, you know, we found doing odd jobs and took them in as, you know, their association. So we have to try and sort out all the nonsense that this is it's it is a headache that's only imagine and how how recent is the finding of the uh the cult uh that is new uh, that is something that we're, i'm gonna bring before the council and we'll see what they want to do about it <laughs> well, hmm. if you've got any leads that need a uh, softer hand you can at least <laughs> say i've got a bit of um one against them. Mm -hmm. And I would argue not so soft hands, but uh, I might take you up on that. Lower number of hands. How about that? <laughs> yes. Yes. I'll um, be sure to be gentle with them. <laughs> there's a smile on her face. Um, so I think we're going to uh, reconvene in a moment, but uh, thank you for being here again. And um, just try to give your statements as accurately as possible. Nuts. By the way, you're doing pretty good for your uh, first run through. Good, because you see her like, she like loosens her collar a bit, because, oh man, <laughs> this is... And she like recomposes herself for a second after that. I could see Thank it in you. your shoulders. <laughs> Roll an insight on her, just to see if she's acting a bit strange. You're you're gonna insider? her? Yeah. Oh, sure. Curious. Insider. her. Hey, she okay. she seems you know, in that brief moment she's she seemed to let out her uh nervousness and then you know, recomposed herself. But that's that's all you gather. We can talk more after the council meeting too. Yes, yes, of course. Of course. And you know, she'll nod to each of you. And return to her her place um the uh kind of brought to order and um you know 
they go into talks about how now the you know foreign emissaries will get a chance to speak and make their requests of the union. Killian shoves um, his elbow backwards and goes, "Get back in your seat." <laughs> it clangs. <laughs> goes, Do you always talk with your hands like that? Like last I checked, there's an elbow, and he's gonna elbow for the cod piece. <laughs> it clangs. <laughs> Although, as a reminder, again, I'm wearing chainmail. <laughs> that was just an elbow with the nuts. Yep. Yep. It just kind of takes it. Just like, all right. You're uh. Just pat him on the shoulder. We'll I deal with your family issues later. Believe that Bastion just took it. He kind of like gives a weird look for a second and then just shrugs. <laughs> okay. Um. So first, they announce uh, that Arlo, envoy of the Dragonair Isle. Isles will be first to speak. Um, he goes into you know uh, his also long-winded speech about history of trade between you know the Isles and um, and the Union. Um, I think particular about the Isles, we should know. Um, so they're they're a group of quote unquote free peoples. Um kind of a, a, a mishmash of people from, you know, there's some, you know, old Catalan blood that settled there some time back. There's um, kind of cast-offs from volts that have found their way there. Um, Entrepreneurs it's true. the country. What's up? Entrepreneurs the country. Yeah, there, 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 there's a lot of wealthy business people that have set up shop in the Dragonair Isles. Um, it, it's a good trading point between you know many different regions. Um, in semi recent years, uh, the kingdom of Galicia to the north um, uh, occupied and captured one of the islands that used to belong to the Dragonair Isles, and there's still some bad blood about that. Um, and he goes into the speech about how I think Galicia is not satisfied with capturing one island, and I believe they slowly intend to occupy and take over the rest of the islands. Um, we have experienced a lot of uh, a lot of our trade routes have been pillaged. Um, conveniently, however, many of the trade routes that we do have open with Galicia have all been fine. We have strong suspicion that they're responsible for this. They may be the source of pirating, as I've heard from other countries. Um, if you know, you know, the Dragonair, Dragonair Isles would like to request a, a joint operation to investigate the, the, these, the effects of these pirates and trace them to their source, which we believe to be Glacia. Um, you know, this is noted down and recorded. Um, there's some murmurs amongst the council members. Um, you know, they, they thank him for his time, and you know, we, we will address you once we've um, addressed all the concerns of the members here today. Um, after that, they then move to uh, Novgorod, to Lady Galina. Um, she, she chimes in with pretty much a very similar story about how you know, a lot of their trade routes have been um, pillaged, and there's a lot of... Um, seemingly you know piracy going on um but they also launch they go into the speech about how um a lot of our um a lot of our food production has been damaged and we're facing food shortages um so we would like to put in a formal request um for aid from the union Know, as you know, a goodwill to our nation between our nations. Um, you see her when she's talking. She's got this very. She seems young, um, but you know, still noble lady, um, and she bears kind of. Um, I would not say strictly like a military uniform, but someone that has been is a decorated military officer. Which is surprising for how long she, young she looks. Um, Bastion, you would know that she, she was um, a fleet admiral 
for Novgorod for some time, for, for, for several years before oh. taking a position. Yeah. God damn. So, yes. Um, and she is, you know, the daughter of the current leader of Novgorod. So there's noble blood so, uh, and power there. Um, sorry, I, I kind of missed this description. Uh, for Arlo, the Dragonair Isles, he, um, he wears this regal outfit, but it is very much not military and more he has money. Lots and lots of money. Um, side note, though. Despite that, um, he is widely regarded as like a really good person because he, you know, he, he's known for, you know, his charitable help of people in need. Um, but you know, he still maintains his level of wealth on top of that. So there's that. Um, okay, so, sorry, missed some of my notes. So yeah, so Novgorod, they 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 put forth you know a request for um, uh, food aid. Um, as an you know, act of good faith between the two nations. Um, she takes her seat, and then you can hear kind of like this low, um, not quite a growl, but just like a very strong sound of disgust from Ulf as Kesthin is announced, uh, the Lord of all time. Um, you know, he he begins with, you know, I have heard some dissenting views of Voltheim, and I understand our past. But putting that aside, we are looking to move forward and work together. Um, so I come before the council to speak to you about a... There's a claim to the throne of Volt, uh, old blood that has not been seen in some time. Um, as you may well know, um, the Council of Elder Dragons has ruled over Voltheim for many years, and we simply request your continued acknowledgement of the sovereignty of the Council of Elder Dragons over the Kingdom of Volts and all its territories. And there, there's a very not veiled uh, comment from Ulf saying, you know, the territories that you stole. Um, hmm. he, he, Kesson twitches a bit at this and, you know, he, he submits his, his, his request of the country and it's, you know, noted down. Question. Yes. Is Council of Elder Dragons a title or a literal title? A title. Okay. I mean, no, 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 none of the Council of Elder Dragons ever show up here. It is always, as far as you know, been um, Kesson. He's kind of been the face for, you know, face to the Valmore Union. If they if they have a problem with Voltheim, they would speak to him. But uh, the Council of Elder Dragons are made of dragonborn, not elder dragons. That is the understanding. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just a, a large group of dragons, just ready to destroy everything. I mean, it would exp it would give a little bit more credit to Ulf. <laughs> <laughs> like, can you imagine, like, yeah, our president's an actual fucking dragon. What's up? <laughs> what, is, what is it, uh, Jumanji from uh, Critical Role? Jumanji? What was the name? <laughs> <laughs> well, the sky's dragon. Well, okay, so... Historically, there have been dragons that have been aligned with Volts and have fought with them. So, uh, the the notion that there is dragons is not too far off. Like they could very well poss poss they could very blah. they could very well have dragons in um, in their midst. If Erdur was here, he would say that the council is actually polymorph dragons. Moving on. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Scarfing down my meal in between comments. Okay, so, um, sorry, what was that? Ignore me. Go ahead. Okay, so um, you know the council now announces you know all the foreign emissaries have been have had their time to uh, present their concerns to the council. Um, we will now move to 
uh, matters of the nation. And we will start with uh, General Aurora with a report on the recent attacks and Ash Gang activities. Um, so Aurora, uh, sorry, Lula. Aurora, you know, she stands up, you know, formally addresses them, um, and she goes into very detailed report of, you know, uh, kind of like this timeline of activities that have, you know, led to to the events in Accord. Um, you know, a kidnapping, a handful of killings in, um, name escapes me, Brilton. Um, you know, further on uh, events in um, Jackfruit Junction and south and north, and they, they, they've um, await many wayposts uh, along the way had been hit and many guards killed in their activities. You know, finally culminating in a very, uh, very brash attack against um, the fort in Accord um, that actually led to you know, the Ash Gang occupation of Accord. You know, the, the official guard were defeated and they, they, they controlled the city for a couple days before we were able to gather our forces and uh, capture those that we could and you know, drive out those that we couldn't. Um, we believe that we have captured far more than have escaped. Um, we even captured an individual uh, that goes by the name of Vanifer, uh, the supposed head of the Ash Gang. Um, she has been cooperative in kind of rooting out the remains. Um, there is another leader uh, that she seems to have some bad blood with, and she, you know, looks like she's out to get her, which works to the benefit of the Union. So we are uh, currently investigating leads on this individual provided by Vanifer, and hope to uh, rein, in, rein in the rest of this group and finally put an end to this, uh, this, to this chapter. Um, I know previously... Um, the Ash Gang had been uh, known as a mercenary group, uh, defense for hire, but um, I, I say we uh, a motion needs to be put forth that you know the Ash Gang is to be uh, stricken from any uh, public acknowledgement of you know of their business. They are criminals and thugs. And um, we have um, we have a few members here that uh, helped uh, track down and even helped Lady Cecilia escape Accord when she stopped over for the night. Um, I would like to turn it over to this group now. Um, I've I've done my best to to to, to sum up the events, but. Um, I would like to offer this group the, the time to provide any additional details that, you know, that may help, uh, may clear things up for the council. And so, uh, you know, Noora pass, kind of passes the torch figuratively over to, to you guys, and the council, you know, kind of eagerly awaits what you have to say about this event. Yeah, I'll stand up. We'll stand up a second later and then sit back down. <laughs> <laughs> He looks over and is like, eh, you guys can get up if you want as well. You go first. Right. You've got this. He shrugs. <laughs> um, the night of the attack, uh, that the Ash Gang decided to rally their forces more violently. We had been tailing them with the events that had kind of cut across Brightlands for a while. Following a kidnapping, uh, one of our own personal friends. Eventually, we made it to um, player forgetting the name of the town. Uh, which one? Uh, the one that the Ash King took over. Accord. Uh, to Accord. Um, as the gang left a trail of blood, hoping to get us caught in it. Luckily, with the help of I'm gonna forget her name too. The uh, uh, Dawnguard lady. Aurora. Uh, Aurora. 
With the help of Aurora, names were quickly cleared, and we took our investigation further into the town. We eventually got to what I would call a, probably a hot spot of their activities. Uh, bar by the name of... Bleh. <laughs> We're going to be playing goddamn, um, uh, <laughs> fill in the blanks here. Um, yeah. whatever. I don't remember that name either, so yep. that's okay. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, this bar, um, yep. filled to the brim with them. Went under a bit of a guise, really wanting to get information about the, uh, kidnapped friend. Talked to them. They had plans for a delivery of the victim to place they said uh, across the lake um wh where was it that they were wanting to bring um l'oreal or at least the boat that was going well there were there was two boats that were setting out right yeah oh right there was two yes so there was uh one that was heading north to the marshlands and there was another that was heading east to city name let me because that was a specific to East Watch. Yep. Two ships, one to one to the marsh, one to East Watch. So there can be assumed activity of them in each of those places. The the attack itself seemed um, almost like a doubling down from our meddling in their affairs. Eventually, eventually breaking our friend out, making a run for it, and them following after. I think they decided the best thing they could do was take over the town. <laughs> Last off, the bit of time we had there, we clearly saw the bla bad blood between those two leaders. So we can say with some certainty it's not a tactic they're using to... Uh, divide attention where it need not be. <laughs> uh, at this, you'll hear... Sorry, one second. Okay, sorry. Um, at this, um, there will be a comment from from, from Kuhn. Um... It seems your friend was at the center of all this. Um, where is this friend? Why Why are they not here? Frankly, they're in hiding. Being kidnapped by an Ash Gang on that scale doesn't exactly want leading to public appearances. Even if this council room is fairly closed off, the transport there would be a worry. Seems a lot of effort was made to capture them. No, I would be... I, I think I, the council would agree that we'd be interested in uh, figuring out why that is. I'm pretty sure she'd be willing. Um, that can be, again, dealt with afterwards once things like personal safety are assured. Even a small escort of a guard or two would be very much appreciated. Of course, of course. Of course. And for the, for the record, as far as I'm concerned, these bastards have got their fingers in too much. <laughs> Even in our little chasing of them, they had their they had their names and operations of various stores with different companies, little proxies that they could use to take the heat and move out of the way. Thug thugs and Vagabonds is one thing, but they're also coordinated in an unprecedented way of just some schmucks at a bar. Aurora will chime in at this point. And it is our understanding you know, she, she, she makes a motionless apologizing for cutting you off. <laughs> He's like, I, no, I was leading to you. Go ahead. It's our understanding that this um the, the, this group, this this cult, it's our understanding that they are the ones that have orchestrated these events. Um, 
you know, we're, we're doing our research, we're following up on leads, we are doing our best to try and um, track down the, the, this cult. Um, I believe that, it, that that completes our report. Um, if the council has any further questions, um, go ahead. And there's some talks and murmurs amongst them, and um, you know, no one no one speaks up, and so Aurora kind of bows and you know takes her seat. Feeling well as well if he hasn't already. Yep. <sighs> okay. Um, next, they address um, the individual to the far right. Hey, here we go. And he goes by the name. Of Castian. Um, uh, so Castian begins, and like you know, he, he very, very formally acknowledges every single member of the council, and um, says, I, "You have you've requested me to be here. Um, I will provide any assistance that I can." Um, and. Uh, Praxis, you know, kind of takes a stand and says, uh, yes. So, hold on. Go look over to your, like, well, how'd I do? <laughs> well, not polite, you spoke efficiently. So, good enough. Followed in my uncle's footsteps. <laughs> no, he seemed a lot less race focused. <laughs> also, a lot less practiced. You fumbled a that lot. Too. <laughs> I said but, uh, following. Crack, we all take fumbling over blatant prejudice. Okay, sorry. Um, cast it. Cast it. Okay, yes. Um, Kuhn kind of sa uh, says, um, okay, to fellow members of the council, um, as you have heard from maybe several other uh, people that uh, this activity of um, of uh, orc band raids and creatures and piracy um, I had recently um, set up an initiative to bring in a group of individuals um, uh, Castian uh, represents this group they are inquisitors um their sole purpose is to be is to um, kind of uh, root out any source of troubles within the nations. Um, uh, I I know it is not my turn to speak yet, but um, I will be uh, presenting them as an option to to, to elevate them to. Uh, equal footing of the guards for temporarily to, to address these issues and hopefully uh, supplement our very spread out military force. Um, and he'll, he'll pass it back to Castian. As Castian says, thank you. Um, you know, we are a group of well-trained um, in the art of sword and magic. Uh, a long history of hunting down creatures. Um, recently, you may have heard of some creature attacks um, in um, in Port Villard. Um, we had a member there that was kind of looking into these events, and Gillen licks his teeth. <laughs> yep. They, I said, no, what's going on? <laughs> they. Um, I believe have found and rooted out and stopped the, the attack of these creatures. Um, I believe there there were werewolves in the town and they have been taken care of. Um, but Kuhn will say, "We thank you for your job that you have already you've already started. It is greatly appreciated. I'm sure the." People can sleep easier with you taking on such uh, such activities. 
and Castian nods and uh, sits back down. Um, Praxis uh, Kuhn will say, for the record, um, I requested him to be here, so he does not have a formal uh, request of the council. I just wanted him to be present. Should anyone have questions of him? And there's like a little murmur amongst the council members, but no one speaks up. And then, uh, last on our list, um, Grand Magister Von Brandt. <laughs> and the lady in front oh, of you stands up. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sorry, say that again. <laughs> Grand Magister Von Brandt. Well, fuck me. Okay. <laughs> How do I miss names every single time? I fucking knew it. That name wasn't on there. Nope. No, I mean, it was said and I missed it. Uh, she stands up, kind of collects herself, and says, um, hmm, What an odd name. <laughs> the, um... Pick a name like that. Recently, um, the Spire has been looking to expand our, our schools of magic. Um, we typically build on magical ley lines to help teach and funnel energy into our students. Um, we, uh, a school of magic um, outside of uh, Elendir, as you know, there, there's a well-known school there, um, might help to uh, bolster, um, bolster the country with, you know, the free access of magic um, that we would provide and, you know, students from our school would be able to go on and help uh, just supplement the needs of the country. Um, it is, it'd be, it'd be a win-win. Students would get to learn and control their magics for those that are out in the world and don't have access to it, access to help. Um, and the, the country could benefit from such an undertaking as having another, another school available. Um, she goes into some statistics about, you know, those that, you know, have magic and aren't trained in it can lead to very catastrophic accidents. And she cites off a few unfortunate, like, uh, you know, case stories about um, students that they found too late who either you know, had a freak accident as a child and killed a bunch of people or those that just got consumed by their magic is when they couldn't learn to control it. Um, there's some, you know, murmur amongst the council members. Um, Kuhn once again steps forward and says, um, do you, do you train formal, uh, war mages? Um, and, you know, the Grand Magister, she says, we don't have a formal school for war magic, but there is... Um, there, there are a lot of benefits outside of war that we can provide. Uh, Kuhn kind of like, you know, scratches his uh, the side of his face, clearly displeased, but um, kind of grumbling to himself. Uh, would is there anything about? Is it would it be improper for any of us in the back to speak up? Um. So you would know that it would be improper if it was the council members, but um, given that this is just, uh, this is kind of like, you know, people amongst the nation, which you are uh, sort of on equal footing with, you, you do have access to speak up. Right. He'll do like whatever, like formalness to like, yes. kind of like raise a hand or something. Yes, basically. They'll, they'll recognize, Ulf will very like eagerly jump at the chance to recognize you. He's like, oh, yes, Killian. Putting a bunch of magic in the area, loading it up. Wouldn't that lead to war mages in the end? People with more proficiency, heck, they they could learn to do it, maybe on that their is... own. But then, give it a few years, maybe they're starting their own coalition of war mages. I'm sure Praxis could lead something good like that. It is always possible. Uh, our school is you know primarily on teaching to control and prevent such catastrophic things but we, I, I do concede that it could lead to such a thing yes Question will also proper his hand up they will uh you know uh, another council member will recognize you 
I stand up and say. And um, for those of the uh, list of war mindset, um, we know very well that the land of Elendir, due to its magical infrastructure, has great power and great bounty for the citizens. If you want to improve the lives of everyone who lives here, I'm personally of the opinion that uh, magic access to more, if not all, is ideal. For the sake uh, of improving lives. Melbourne gives like a nod, like, yeah, yes. Uh, and he, he, he speaks out and says, um, for the record, can we have your name? Is he speaking to me or to her? To you. So you, you are the one talking now. Uh, uh, I'm, my name is Bastion. Thank you very much. I'll take the time. Thank you. Do you have a last name, Bastion? Do play or briefly forget that because it's not on my sheet. I declare. <laughs> He's like, okay. And he kind of like, he, he um, plays with his mustache a little bit and says, I believe I've heard that name. Okay. Um, you are of noble blood, yes. We are, and to at least some of the more uh, nearby kingdoms to this land. We provide weapons, but a magical craft yes. will be able to create more. Yeah. You see that land. yeah, you see that look of recognition on his face it's like, yes, that's what it is. We and... if I'm not mistaken, provide many of the base of the weapons and get enchanted in Elendir. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. And so, you know, you know, Melbourne speaks once more and says, yeah, see? While normally I would oppose, you know, such, uh, you know, we obviously have our own school of magic. Uh, I would not think we would normally need another, but with proper placement, you know, far enough away, we could perhaps get those that do not have access to us. And in that way, I can support something like this. And there's, there's little... Seat back down. Yeah, yeah, they, they've moved on from you. They completely yeah. ignore you now. Uh, there's little chatter amongst the council as before it's it's brought to order once more. Um, and, you know, the, the magister will kind of say, that, that, so I, that's, that's the motion I put forward. Uh, thank you. And she'll take a seat. Uh, okay. There is a now. There's now a brief, um, brief recess before the members of the union will get to speak, and then vote on what they plan to do. Okay. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Sorry, just got cake delivered to me. Oh, sorry. Can't argue with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So th there's a you know, quick recess before they get to deliberate on the events of the session. Uh, Jen's gonna head over here if he can. Mhm. Mm and just uh, uh, he'll he'll go to Cecilia first. And it's like, it's like, well, I said I thought you did pretty good. How'd I do? I would say you did pretty well. But maybe uh, you should be here at court instead of me. <laughs> uh, I'm too out of practice. <laughs> it, it looks like the to like basically like everyone sitting around is like, this is your first proper council meeting? Have you had much time to I guess um talk and get to know any of them? Many of them were still arriving as of yesterday, so no. Um, I mean, I mean before this even. I've no, I would not say I've talked to any of these people formally. Cool, you're gonna meet my uncle, and he like brings her over to Ulf. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yep. And he's like, <laughs> "Okay, informal meeting. You need to you need to start <laughs> making connections, lady." She's like, "Oh, oh, oh okay." Um, uh, Ulf has introduced himself. It's been very helpful. So, so your uncle, I see. And just nods like, and just, uh, how about this? Um, uncle, you're used to 
rooting out vagabonds in the old kingdom, right? Mainly from Volt. <laughs> I've done my fair share. Got any advice for her with uh, tactics with the Ash Gang bastards? Mm. Well, a, a good old display of force would do the trick. Just uh, take the troops out. Don't uh, don't give them a place to hide. Uh, otherwise, you, you seem to be handling the investigations well, Lady Cecilia. And she kind of gives a, a nod and acknowledgement of you. Know, Thank you. Killian will just like try to like keep a little conversation going around. He he wants to see if he can't get like Cecilia a bit more like not relaxed, but a bit used to the environment a bit more if, if he can. Yes, yeah, no, yeah. you're just trying to drive the conversation and basically get them acquainted so that they can both can take over and help out. <laughs> not take over, but give advice. I mean, like from you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you two meet. Talk. Yep. I'm gonna walk away now. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah. 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 So after a few minutes, you know, they're they're in a place where they're discussing. Sorry. What? I thought you were gonna move on. I was gonna do some first for talk. No, no. Just after a few minutes of their discussion, Killian, you feel you could step back as they're they're talking, you know, troops and politics and whatnot. All right. I should just kind of lean forward to Miss Von Brandt. Just be like, I did what I could. Hope it helps. I, it is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Bastion, was it? Yes. Uh, it is, it's, it is, um, strange. You didn't strike me as the kind to put much faith in magic. Done things for me that I never, never could. And I was lucky to fall into it rather than have to study it ah uh, you're more of the uh divine type aren't you yes you can almost say faith is what i do mm -hmm. okay i hope it stands well, well my kind of magic isn't suited for war but it is suited to outfit a village well i mean the magic of healing has always been a touchy subject amongst the arcane, but comes quite freely to those of the divine persuasion. Kind of grins says, oh, I don't heal very much. <laughs> I... I build. I... Interesting. That's why I'm curious if this does get uh, built, where it'll be done. And hopefully I can uh, maybe sit in a lecture, if it's not exclusive to those of the arcane nature. I mean... By all means, you'd be free to, to join. I don't know how helpful it would be to you, but we always welcome those that are interested. I'm always happy to learn. And I'm sure uh, separating arcane and divine has led to a severe lack in cross-knowledge in the past. It's not a strict separation, more so, I guess, a lack of capability, lack of understanding of... That kind of magic, it's just, it's not been, it, it's, it's not well researched. It's not, no, not a lot of people can even like do it. it. It's just, it's difficult for some reason, but that's just you know, the way things are. Sounds like even more reason. I know us uh, divine types are much for research ourselves. Maybe what we need is someone who's focused on it. <laughs> I welcome the collaboration. Smile and kind of sit back and just watch it through this meeting. <sighs> okay. Uh, Lena and Nemia, are you guys doing anything or are you just kind of sitting back taking all this in? <laughs> I think they're playing Lena's cards in the back at this in. point. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> let me see. Um, yeah, Lena's not great at cards, but she can do dice. Unfortunately, that's too loud. <laughs> He's playing fucking Yahtzee in the corner. <laughs> They're all talking about stately business and politics, and you just hear dice rolling. Come on, come on! <laughs> Throw in the dice. Oh, I'm used to just that. Okay. Um, I'll say, okay, but we do need our dice rolling mat, and I'll take mine. 
<laughs> a little piece of cloth, I think, so that it doesn't knock on the bench. Oh, that's clever. All right. Well, well, it's best to not focus on when those you play <laughs> on, on, on this sort of events, you learn a couple of tricks. <laughs> It's just a side thing, Killian. Uh, like, he, he might go like the like the long way uh, back from where he was, just to say hi to practice. Okay. There's a formal formal handshake, as he he, he will kind of step down to, you know, briefly talk to you. Yep. Yeah, like, oh. said I'd see you here, and here we are. Yeah. Well, was, uh, thank you for uh, for filling us in on that, and from my understanding. Oh, you know, Lady Cecilia is lucky that you were there. Uh, we did some good running. <laughs> well, now I know next time... Uh, Tactical I military run... retreat. How about that? I like it. Uh, next time we encounter... <clears throat> Excuse me. We encounter any of these, uh, these bastards, uh, I know who to call. <laughs> I'm sure you got a bone to pick. Uh, I wouldn't be against it. Um, and he might also just like say a quick hello to the other, um, uh, like the other union guys who was left and right. Yep. Yep. You know, they're, they're formal. They're polite. Mm. Uh, they recognize your affiliation. Yep. yep. And and he'll 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 just also ask like, so you're part of the one heading the um, uh, what is it uh, Inquisitors? Oh, you're gonna stop to. To, oh, wait, no, no he's, he's asking two? practice about it because practice said like, he was supporting it earlier, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm not. I'm more so giving them a, a job that we're basically hiring them to go help supplement our army and deal with threats that we wouldn't normally. So they were a thing beforehand, and you kind of found them. Yeah, they, they've. I mean, I, I've heard them uh, heard about them on previous occasions hunting down. You know, uh, the creatures of the night, and stuff like stuff like that. Legends, stories that most people wouldn't even believe are real. But th th there's been some truth. Um, I I've, I've encountered a werewolf in my day, um, so I, I trust I trust in them well enough to do the job. I hope they do well. Then a lot of weird stuff out there. Precisely. Oh, leave you to it. Good to see you. Yeah, he nods. Uh, he'll just head back, kind of giving a glance at um the guy here, and I'm not say like ju like just as he's walking back. Really, you're gonna you're gonna mad dog Castian and not Kestlin? <laughs> say that again. Sorry. You're, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna give eyes at Castian and not Kestlin? <laughs> Uh, he, he's not even giving up. He's just like seeing what he's doing. He, oh, okay. okay. Like it's yeah. You know, he's not. He's not shooting the, the, the evil eye or anything. Okay. <laughs> Although honestly, like walking back, he might just like look at Kessen and go, "Hey," and just walk by. <laughs> Kessen probably like turns as a. It's another one. He he also recognizes your affiliation. <laughs> he might like stop on a yell on that and just turn around and it's like, look. Look, don't worry. I'm not quite as bad as the other one. Huh. I would hope not. It's uh, quite a pain to hear. He grates my ears. I'm just worried there's not anything else he's got uh, in the back pocket and putting you priority. You see, it, he kind of squints at you. Don't know if that is a warning or a threat. Hmm. Shake says, like, no, I just expect the old man to maybe um, be forgetting about a food shortage over his anger. <laughs> he, he says it with like a dry smile, like trying to make it not as awkward. Mm. Kesslin is... He, he seems almost not quite angry, but just wanting this conversation to be done. Almost the same animosity that Ulf shows to him, Kessen is showing to everyone else in the room. Like, he's here out of duty, and definitely not because he wants to be. Yeah, like, oh, I'll make it any more miserable than it has to be. 
It is appreciated. Wave and walk off. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, after a moment, uh, the council will uh, come back in session. Uh, the uh, the three union representatives will uh, go into um, just kind of an overview of um, what's happened in the session, you know, highlight some of the key points and requests that have been made. Questions, uh, comments, concerns. Yeah, and they'll basically, they'll go into, so the trade master goes into, you know, the current state of trades in the union. Um, he'll say, you know, things are steady, but, you know, we've you know a couple countries are uh going to be at a loss for some time um, this will definitely hurt trade um, i don't see it being anything long term but um you know we will try and keep on top of that and as just as needed um lady cecilia cecilia has graciously offered up additional support from the brightlands which should go a long way in stemming the expected losses um, next, you know, Lord of Coin, uh, Thorok stands up, um, and he just, he's very blunt and straightforward. He says, without raising taxes, our reserves are not going to last through the end of the year. And, you know, with this hit to trade, the, the piracy, uh, we are declining and we will need to change some things in order to raise coin. Uh, there's been many requests for aid financially, for military aid. Uh, the union simply does not have the coin to support such things. Um, we have, you know, kind of, we, we have brought in the inquisitors to help deal with some threats, but large scale, uh, large-scale uh, oper military operations are just not quite um, on the table without some adjustments. Uh, at this, he kind of leans over or kind of turns to Kuhn, and he he stands up and says, uh, "Well, basically, what he said: uh, we are stretched too thin. Um, we can." To kind of uh, free up more troops, we can reduce our our, our typical patrols. We can reduce um, kind of we can reduce our country guard and bolster more uh, active military to help with these threats. Uh, but I, I I am hesitant to do that as that will make things a little more a little less safe. Um, at home. Uh, so uh, at this point, the council members kind of go back and forth on, you know, should we do this? Um, they'll each go into their talking points of what they think they should do. Um, at this, uh, so there's kind of some deliberation going on amongst them. Uh, you even see maybe like a few formal votes take place. You know, they'll call for a vote. You know, hands will be raised, tally up the numbers. It'll be recorded. Um, they'll, they'll take notes and it'll move on to the next. Um, it's kind of it, it, it. It's less formal out in the open as they're talking amongst themselves, uh, deciding what to do. Um, the right. magistrate turns back and says, "Do you guys come to these things often?" And like she's kind of addressing the group as a whole. The Von Brandt lady? Yes. Hey, Kelly kind of shrugs. Honestly, I'm wondering why we're still here. Because we'd be too awkward to leave now. I'm also kind of curious to see if the school gets it built. There's a there's a smile on her face. Um, yeah, I was, I was going to ask. Um, do, do they deliberate deliberate like this for a while? Am I supposed to do anything? Oh, glad to kill him. Kill looks is like he he kind of like shrugs. Like I've just heard stories from my uncle. Um, there is some dragging to it usually. 
Okay, okay, well. I think you're doing okay for now, if that's your worry. Thank you. You know, everyone I've met has just been, met has just been so nice. It's been weird. Politics tends to do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, you're, when you're not talking to the politicians, it is. It's what, what we call um, a mask. This, <laughs> even if all of these people already wear some sort of mask, like, uh, and I'll look in the crowd, but I, no, I, I don't. Is is that guy wear a mask? I'll, I'll point at the dragon. No, okay. <laughs> He's far. I can't see. Um, I'd say he is. I, I, I'm sure. Well, I'm sure if social norms were at the window right now, him and my uncle would be at each other's throats. <laughs> Okay, let's say he is. He's also wearing another, an extra rhetoric mask over his head. Quite yeah, so scales. They're, they're all nice. <laughs> <laughs> rhetoric skills. And they're all, are, are, they're all usually nice. Killing well, with the oh, good. Sorry. No, that's that's all. Uh, Killing lean to Nemia and go. So you know where that guy's from, right? And he points over to the um, Inquisitor guy. Let me zoom out. The the one who was related to the there guy we ran into the other day. From where? Apparently they spun the story differently than me knocking him in the stomach and your group running off with a kid. Oh. Well, were they going to believe a bunch of nobodies or that guy who was a crow and he's... <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go ask him I mean, about it later. <laughs> Bastion might tap on the shoulder and say, uh, Does that count as me owing you money for him threatening someone here? <laughs> <laughs> nah. Bastion no count. Blood. No blood, no foul. Alright. Does Bastion count? Because I got a pretty good elbow in there. <laughs> uh, oh. He's gonna hurt myself harder. Don't flatter yourself. Uh, after, uh, after some time, uh, they'll, they'll, the council members will come to order, um, and they will address those that are there and kind of uh, explain what their current plans are. Um, uh, Kuhn will probably will, will take the stand and take the lead in explaining what's uh, what's going to happen. Uh, you know, we, we've taken some votes, um, decided how best to use the resources available to us. Um, we are, in fact, going to uh, lessen our patrols, um, kind of divert some resources uh, to help uh, bolster our navy. Uh, we can definitely work with the people of the Dragonair Isles. You know, he'll motion towards them. Uh, sorry, towards Arlo. Uh, we're going to help address these uh, pirate concerns as this is directly affecting our trade and you know, coin. It's having a strong impact on the country as a whole. Um, we will do what we can um, to address food to Novgorod, um, Lady Cecilia can assist with um, transporting uh, uh, excess food uh, to to Novgorod, and hopefully this will be enough to get you through these trying times. Um, Lady Cecilia nods, um, and you know so does uh, Galena, Lady Galena. Um, as usual, Lord Keston, we will leave Volt to its business. And that will be that. Uh, Kesson says, it is appreciated. Um, yeah, Killing gives a look to his uncle like, uh, maybe next time, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kuhn kind of, he goes through uh, the notes that's, that has been passed around. Um, uh, Lady Galena, um, as you have stated, there is a food sort food shortage. Um, I'm hoping that there is no lack of coin, and perhaps we can increase trade. As you have heard, 
um, coin would greatly aid the union. And Lady Galena and Odds says, uh, yes, I believe we can make an arrangement. And Kuhn will say, very well. And this this coin can help um, can help support the uh, our new inquisitors to uh, track down our threats on land. Combined with you know the the navy, we should be able to hopefully address the concerns of the country. And I believe there's one more note. Uh, the council is currently uh, evenly split on the matter of a school of magic. Um, so uh, uh, I apologize, uh, Grand Magister, but we will have to discuss this once more at the next session to see if we can come to an agreement. Um, so please plan on attending as we might have more questions of you. And, uh, you know, she, she, she stands up and says, uh, I understand. Uh, I will be there. Thank you. Um, Kuhn kind of looks around and says, well, I think uh, I think that's enough for today. Um, I believe that adjourns this council session. Um, and we shall uh, meet once more in our the next scheduled council meeting, which you will be notified of shortly. And he kind of claps his hand and says, that is all. Thank you all for attending. And you know, some of the the noble, uh, the noble people in the crowd begin to get up and leave. Um, you know, the, the foreign emissaries begin to get up and leave, and you know, the council session is adjourned. I feel like it's like a stretch in a yawn. It's just a long exhalation from Bastion. <laughs> oh, is it over? <laughs> yeah, you're free. Go spread your wings. <laughs> Killian, you promised me one punch from your she, guy. She, at the so. same time, is kicking Killian in the shin, just low and hopefully where it's not too noticeable as a motion. It's an expression. <laughs> Let me get some. Shut up. Just sighs and again leans forward upon Brent and just says, Do you see who voted against it? I wasn't paying as much attention as I should have. Mm. Well,. I believe uh, the general there was not too happy that it's not war magic. Um, and, you know, uh, he, he has a lot of people that support him. I imagine he's... Uh, it's not a controlling majority, but it seems it was, in fact, evenly split. So maybe I have a few more people to talk to to see if I can convince them. If I had to guess... I'd say before you get to Praxis, get to the rock. Praxis is a big fish, but the, the rock, you can't really make a decision. Um, get to Otterson even better. Otterson didn't really say much that whole conversation. I believe, you know, I, I feel like Praxis would be the, he's the one that seems to be in charge of things. Oh yeah, like I said, he's the big fish, but if you can get one of the other two on your side, it might be easier. Killian leans in and is like, I'm pretty sure the majority works on that. Yeah, that's what I mean. If you can get one on your side before you present it to Praxis, make him more likely to listen to you. Sure. Pretty sure Praxis swites a lot. Anyways, if you need to talk to him directly, I can probably get you a line. Well, do you know Praxis? <laughs> that would be very helpful. Um, I, Killian, I believe that's what they said your name was. No, it's... it's a pleasure to meet you. And you're, um, uh, I heard the Von Brand, spell. I missed the first name, yes, sorry. Yes, sorry. Um, formal title, Grand Magister, Avaria Von Brandt. No, it's... shakes a hand. Killian, do you know every big motherfucker in politics with the sword? He shrugs like, <laughs> I mean, who else is worth knowing? All the little people with the knife. Eh. <laughs> Shakes his head like, all right. Does that include you? What? On which category? I'm not in politics. <laughs> Avaria kind of like chuckles at your banter. It's just, well, uh, it has been a pleasure meeting you. Um, I would very much 
you know, appreciate talking to uh, General Praxis at some point. So, uh, sorry. Um, I can't guarantee perfect entry into it, but um, no, no, of course, just you know, private meeting would be fantastic. I could try and sway him. Um, but uh, for now, I do have some other things to take care of. Um, are you staying in town? Yep, we've got Where? a got a room at the Hebrewood. Oh, didn't we? It has a name, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it we does. do. I just, I just don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> it's in my notes somewhere. I don't either. It's in my conversations notes happen, and I don't want to take ten seconds before a response to be like, hmm, "What was that before I say it?" No, that's, that's fair. Yeah, it's too far back in my notes. I don't remember. Okay, that one. Uh, yeah, you know the okay. one. Yeah. I'll um. I'll send word maybe sometime later today or tomorrow. Um, I don't mean to keep you here if you have plans, but I, I'm assuming you're not going anywhere for the rest of the day. Probably not. Yes, um, it, it's probably about uh, a little afternoon, maybe one o'clock after you know the full events of the day have transpired. Uh, you're probably all a bit hungry. <laughs> I'm just gonna shrug and uh, so I ran. Where do you plan on going? Uh, I have some personal matters to attend to, but um, no, perhaps I can join you later. We'll, we'll, we'll see how the events go. We'll let see. her let her go. Everyone wants out of this room as quick as possible. Yes. Um, she she's getting ready to exit into the the, the stair walkway and you know steps back in as you know Keston is making his way up. And you just see a, a very seething scowl from him directed towards you guys, and he continues on his way. Kelly and sends him, it gives him like a thumbs up and a wink. <laughs> Ashton looks behind him to see who he's scowling at. <laughs> it's like, I didn't fucking say anything. Uh, um, Cecilia um, and Ulf will approach you guys before leaving. Um, uh, Cecilia will say, so, um, I was speaking with, with Ulf, um, you know, you're, uh, quite the warrior, I hear, Killian, and your, your band looks to be, uh, quite capable. You're playing me up again, aren't you? You know, it's Ulf. Hmm. Of course. I Good, mean, don't I, stop. I, I, tr I trained you. You better be. <laughs> It wouldn't have it any other way. What do you need us to do? <laughs> um, so there was... Uh, I know this This wasn't exactly brought up in the meeting because we didn't want it too public, but I don't know if you've heard rumors that there was a break-in at the Grand <laughs> Cemetery recently. <laughs> and it Eric, you son of a bitch. This is great. <laughs> 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 Oh. Sir, we'll investigate that right away. <laughs> uh, Killian steps on Nemia's foot. <laughs> he gives the signal. <laughs> there, it, it takes a certain kind of person to to try and uh, a grave rob, loot. I, I don't know. I don't know what they were there for. Did you find out if they took anything? As far as we can tell, they didn't. I, they, uh, you know, we identified a specific uh, mausoleum that they'd entered, but the place looks like you know they kind of touched a bunch of things and then left. I, I I don't we we don't know what they were there for. We don't know if anything was taken, but you know this is you, maybe uh, not not so much a security threat, but you know we, we need to figure out what's what, what's going on there. If you don't mind me asking. Why, why is this one mausoleum so important? We don't know. We have no idea. Why is it being investigated then? Because we found that the the reports that there were that they the guard on duty reported that you know during their their search they busted out of this mausoleum and they all sorts of strange powers and, you know, knocked them flat on their asses before they made their escape. It's quite some exotic tales about the intruders, but part so, of me believes it's just the guards telling tales. 
Yeah, it sounds to me like a bunch of teenagers who got in there and the guards are embarrassed they couldn't catch them. Mm -hmm. So what would you have us do in this then? Well, um, I heard stories about your investigation in Brilton. Perhaps you can apply that same set of skills. Um, general Praxis, I spoke with him previously, and um, he's open to the idea of having a, a third party investigate the matter. Mm. Good to have a neutral third party. I mean, if this accounts to us discovering that your guards have a spirits problem, it will be quite a waste of time. Oh god, I didn't even consider the fact of ghosts. If it's ghosts, I'm not helping. Actually, oh, that, that drinks. Reminds, that not reminds that me. Spirits. <laughs> uh, a thing I meant to ask about. Um, back at uh, Accord, Accord was it? Accord. Yeah. Uh, where um, L'Oreal got kidnapped? No. Uh, she got kidnapped in, in Brilton. 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 Uh, yeah. Back in Brilton, um, there was some stuff going on at the cemetery there. There was? Yeah, the undead. Oh, that's right. I did hear about that. I mean, I mean, it's unfortunate, but actually, hold on. As a DM, I'm going to pause that. Um, the undead coming back to life has been a thing since the Calamity. It's not it's not uncommon. So like the 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 common thing to do now is to burn bodies to prevent that from happening. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, older graveyards and stuff that existed before, or and maybe even within, you know, a handful of years afterwards, they did you know discover that those that were improperly buried or disposed of did, you know, return to undeath and wreak havoc. Okay, so fair. That, that happening is not that uncommon. But no, but we... Yeah. No, they deliberately... Yes, yes. I just wanted to, I just wanted to make yeah. that note. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, so so in character. Okay, but no, the um the lady there, the... Uh, was it the gravekeeper? The, the priestess, I believe. Yeah. Yes. We did find her body, yes. We saw her... We we didn't we never confirmed if it was them, but they looked like Ashkin. Interesting. It was the night before, and then we ran in and dealt with her s screaming corpse. Hmm. Well, I mean, might be best put towards the Ashkin before we go towards this singular graveyard. I mean, you don't think it's related, do you? So we, just, we already have some Ashkin members in tow talk to them about it. Ah, I mean, the, I mean, you're quite right. There could be some sort of connection. I mean, I don't see what they could be doing at the Grand Cemetery unless they're looking for something in particular. Eric, you hear the, the players trying to deflect away, attach away from that thing. Come on, man. <laughs> well, you're saying there's a connection. She's trying to think of connection. Yeah. It's like, maybe they were trying to some undead shit and got caught early. I mean, there would be a large number there. There's countless, countless soldiers, warriors there. It would be, that would be a grave threat to the capital if that were to be a thing. Wait, that fucking, uh, what do we do with that crystal? Uh, I think one Shatter. of us has it. Wait, what? Which crystal? Wrapped it in a cloth and took it with us, I think. The one that was embedded inside the priestess's body. Yeah. Oh, wasn't there her... Okay. Is that one of oh, her yeah, bags? Were... Yes. Yes, it is. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Hold As, on. As uh, Lena remembers roots around in her bag and pulls out like a bundle of cloth. I forgot I had this. Oh, you still have that grimy thing? What is it? So we don't know. I think we were going to get it identified, but then the things went very downhill very quickly. <laughs> and we uh, kind of oh. lost the... It was jammed in the body of the priestess. No, hold on, let me... Let me, let me I can identify that. I can that <laughs> <laughs> Try not to touch it too long. I wrapped it in a cloth for a reason. I'll just cast the one minute spell of it. <laughs> yes. Okay, so, you know... 
the the rest of the council kind of fills out of the room or files out of the room. Sorry, uh, kind of leaving just you you guys, Cecilia and Ulf. I'm not going to bother moving everyone though. Um, so you spend the time to identify it, and you identify it as a soul gem. Um, its sole purpose is to um, trap the souls of of creatures and seal them away into them. Oh uh, yeah, this is a nasty piece of work, and soul gem fan recognizes it. A housing for a spirit, usually of a living creature. Yeah, the um, Cecilia and Ulf kind of like look at each other, like well, they we've never dealt with such a thing before. I, I'm not sure who to even take this to. Uh, you know, kind of like slaps the hand on the table. You know, someone who might be useful. There, we have an arch magister in town. If, any, if, anyone's know weird, yeah, if anyone's gonna know any weird magic bullshit, um, it'd be her. That that is one train of thought. Uh, another is, um, no, no offense to you, but someone of a higher religious standing might also have some opinion. I'm barely religious. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I so mean, those are those are two two trains of thought to explore. Could you hand it off to Aurora and put it through the Dawn Guard? They have the sources for that. Possibly. How about how about we go ask the? Uh, Von, how about we go ask from, uh, Von Brand and we said we might meet with her later today. Hmm. That'd be interesting to end a conversation. And then we can get this to you tomorrow, and you can send it through the proper channels. Yeah, you see, there's a big kind of smirk on all's face. Like, look at you, naked connections. Doing politics. <laughs> You're cut out for this. I should almost bristle at the implication that he made that connection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There is so much pride going on in this little line. <laughs> um, it, he just he just nods like, All right, well, we can get to you tomorrow and do that. Um, heck, if that's something they're up to, that might explain the graveyard. Hmm. Possibly. Or at least be a route for you guys to look and do further. Definitely. If, you know, this would definitely be up the Dawn Guard's alley. They've been stamping out undeath to the Legion for as long as I can remember. <sighs> well, maybe they'll be, maybe they'll have insight. Um, Lord Elf, I do have one more question that Killian will give me a straight answer to. Is it like illegal for an outsider to learn the secrets of your guys' steel? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to talk about a story. He just brags about it, so I tell him the answer. It is not illegal. It is... Valiant steel is, is rare. It is, it's not quite steel. There is something special about it. You know, it, it has been around since the age of the age of gods. And there's precious little left of it. I mean, uh, there's a bit of national pride that goes along with it. So an outsider coming up thinking he can do just as good. <laughs> no, but an outsider willing to learn, I imagine, would be less frowned upon. Hmm. I'm just curious if you know anyone who I could eventually make my way to if I. If you, uh, go that if way. you, if you find your way down to the old kingdom. I'm sure uh, I can put you in touch with the right person. A an acquaintance of Killian, it's qu an acquaintance of mine. Does it have to be the one who uh, forged his sword, or is that more of a heirloom? That has been in the family for some time, but I can put you. I can get you in touch with the right people. Be actually <laughs> fantastic. Thank you. Yep, but. That means you're going to have to drag his butt home at some point. Good luck with that. Oh, I was going to leave Killian behind. He wants to go with his business. Fair enough. You and the old kingdom, you'll get torn to pieces in seconds. Yeah, probably, but then I'll have to uh, 
forge new tendons to put me back together now. Good, <laughs> be a good learning experience. Um, Lady Cecilia will step in and says, uh, well, I do appreciate you help, your help in this, and you know, please let us know anything you find. Um, we we'll just send a we'll, bird? We'll be in town. We, I mean, we'll, I'll be here I'll be here, and she kind of motion gestures to the council chamber. I've got, you know, meetings with several of the other council members one-on-one -on -one to just kind of get better acquainted and associated with who I'll be working with for the foreseeable future. Um, you can find me here most days. Oh. Ah, uh, that's my phone. Uh, Brother. Yay! Tornado warning in this area. Oh. Ooh. Oh, lovely. Fun. Um. <laughs> Well, then. Uh, don't go flying a kite. Until, uh, like, yeah, for the next quarter hour, 25 minutes. Interesting. Yeah, Watch if Ariel suddenly disappears. <laughs> <laughs> it might just be a power outage, which I desperately hope not, but yeah. Let's keep the yeah. session moving, guys. <laughs> yep. I mean, yep. we're done in a few minutes anyway, so All right. it's okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Lady Cecilia says, yep, so I'm going to... Uh, stay here with your uncle for a little bit, and we have much to discuss. Uh, Brightlands and the Old Kingdom are neighbors that will long been trade partners. Glad you two are getting along. Uh, and thank you for the introduction. <laughs> well, after helping us get out of the town, at least I can do. Of course, of course. I don't think we could and... have found the escape exit on our own. Well hidden, though. Now, maybe not so much. Um, if, in the course of your investigations, uh, you find your access restricted, uh, you know, please feel free to come to myself or you know, even even Ulf. He, he, I'm sure he can help cut through some red tape for you. And Ulf kind of just nods and says, uh, "Yeah, anything you need." You always, you know where to find me. Uh, Ulf does have kind of like a, a permanent chamber here at the council because he, he spends most of his time here. No, I was like, oh, we'll probably see you at least tomorrow. Look forward to it. And he, uh, he kind of holds out his arms and they're like, uh, come here. No, come here. No, yeah. <laughs> and he goes up to you and he grabs you, gives you a big old hug and a hard uh, pat on the back. It's a good scene, boy. Real quick, can we, like, contest the strength check? <laughs> sure. I'd like to imagine, basically, that he, that Ulf has always been the one to pick Killian up. Yes. <laughs> Bastion's going to lean into Lena while this happens. Which goes, so, so athletics? Yeah, sure, athletics. Okay. So, magic is cheating, but... Ah, come cheating. on! <laughs> he still picks you up. Uh, almost had you. <laughs> like you almost had that tug of war. Ooh. <laughs> like you almost had my left arm. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Sorry, that one got me. Ooh. As he lets go, uh, he, lo he, he looks to his uncle. It's like, that's the reason I'm hanging around with them. They knew we had taken down a couple of pegs. I'm going to learn how. <laughs> oh, we need to be taking out a couple of heads. All right. You got damn right you do. Let's go. Like, we're going to keep suckling this man's teeth. Let's go then. Fine. Uh, alrighty. You guys have something to look into. Um... Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We'll get so, right okay. that. so, which leader of the Ash Gang are we going to frame for this? Oh. <laughs> um, so. Uh... Watch the plot twist be there was a second set of people that were in there. Oh. <laughs> You have an investigation ahead of you that has been assigned to you to look into perhaps who in, who entered into the Grand Cemetery, perhaps a connection to undead in in Brilton. You have uh, you know several. You have a lot of Ash King members and a leader at your disposal. One thing for the future, real quick, I might just ask a Cecilia or Rolf. Yeah. Uh, within the few, next few days, where could he find the Inquisitor guy? Oh, um, uh, General Praxis probably know better, but I'm assuming he's setting out to do whatever it is we were paying him to do. 
All right. Uh, maybe I'll find him today then. Okay. Bye. <laughs> okay. Um, yep. So you've got an investigation. You've got a bunch of resources available to you. People to question. Uh, not that you need it. Kellen's <laughs> um, <laughs> gonna like pull <laughs> Nemia into a room and be like, "What do you know?" <laughs> and, uh, like, what the fuck's about to happen here? Like, what are we, what are we doing? <laughs> well, are investigating doing? your own murder. <laughs> this is yeah. how. This is how. This is how. As a GM, you simultaneously give the player something to do and give them free time. <laughs> yeah. Well, you do have other things that you can look into. I believe. Uh, Christ. There was something with the troop that you wanted to look into. Mm -hmm. There was... Um, uh, L'Oreal has a mission for you when you get back. You know what we should do? We should just like put L'Oreal as a contractor of this investigation, and all the missions she puts us on count as missions <laughs> towards finding <laughs> whoever was there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the fucking tax fraud, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we have many things we can do. <laughs> yep. And that is where we're going to leave the session. Uh, okay. <laughs> and they're Without going... any bloodshed. <laughs> uh, as right before they walk out the door, Killian will punch Bastion. I gotta just clang. <laughs> just like, can you talk with your mouth, please? It's that hits. Clang. <laughs> uh, hold on. Yeah, that hits. Does he have a shield on right now? Uh... He would not. I, I do, think. but it's not. it doesn't have the Forge Blessing, that's why. Um, yeah, he'll just be like, do you know how to, like, win a conversation without punching someone? Alright, who owes, who owes who what? I punched someone in the room. And he walks out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, Atlanta, just like, does it count as blood or no? <laughs> eh, he made contact. I think he's starting to bruise. That's <laughs> Until next time, guys. <laughs> yep.